Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Illusion. In this short course, we are going to talk about callbacks and async await to make asynchronous code in JavaScript. We are going to talk about promises with async await. Then we we'll look at what is callback function. Then we are going to understand why callback is implemented. Problems we can solve with callbacks and callbacks with promises with async await. So let's first talk about what is callback function. A callback function is a function passed to another function as an argument which is then invoked inside the outer function to complete some kind of routine or action. JavaScript runs code sequentially in top-down order. However, there are some cases that code runs after something else happened and also not sequential. This is called the asynchronous program. Callback make sure that the function is not going to run before the task is completed, but it will run right after the task has completed. It helps us to develop asynchronous JavaScript code and keeps us safe from problems and error. In JavaScript, the way to create callback function is to pass it as a parameter to another function. So let's first understand what problem callback solves. You all know JavaScript is event-driven language. This means that instead of waiting for a response before moving on, JavaScript will keep executing while listening for other events. So let's take a look at a very simple example. Now let's suppose that we have a variable here where data is equal to and then we specify empty array here. Now if I create here a function first and then specify some data to this data variable inside this function. So if I specify here data and then specify some data inside this array like this and right down here I'm going to create another function with the name second and if I specify here console.log data and if I say here first, if I call the first function and call the second function, when I save the changes, as you would expect, the function first is executed first and then the function second is executed and we get the array in the console. But what if the function first contains some sort of code that can't be executed immediately? For example, an API request where we have to send a request then wait for the response. To simulate this action, we are going to use set timeout, which is native JavaScript method that calls a function after a specified delay. So we are going to delay this first function. So right inside this first function here, we need to say set timeout, and we call here a callback function, and we execute this callback function after one second. So we pass here one thousand millisecond. So this will execute this callback function after one second, and then we call this data inside this set timeout. So this is going to add a one second delay to this first function. So now if I save the changes, now you can see we have the empty array in the console because JavaScript is now specify value to the data variable after one second. But the second function execute immediately. So that is why we are not going to get any value inside this array. To understand this, we can add a console message in the function. So let's suppose if I add here console.log first function and if i copy this and use that right here and specify here second function save this you can see we get the second function first and then we get the first function this is because we have one second delay to this first function and this first function is going to initialize this data variable after one second so you can't just call one function after another and hope they execute in the right order callbacks are the way to make sure certain code doesn't execute until other code has finished execution. So this is where the callback function comes in. Let's talk about the real world example to understand callback function. Now let's suppose that you have front end and back end. Your front end is depends on the back end data. This is what we usually do in application. So let me create here a function. The function name is fetch API. And we're also going to create the second function. And the second function name is front end. We get the data from this fetch API and specify that right inside this second function. Now let me just call both these functions. Let me execute both these functions. It's going to return backend and front end as a response. If I save the changes, you can notice I'm going to get the backend data first and then get the front end data. But sometimes backend data might take some time to return result. So let's add that delay inside this fetch API function. So inside this fetch API, what if I call set timeout like this and get rid of this console.log right from here and save the changes. You can see we get the front end first and then get the back end. 
and this is where most of the user have errors now let's take a look at how we can solve this problem with callback so what we are going to do is we are going to call here an argument so we space over here callback like this and then right inside this console.log we call that callback argument and this argument is a type of function so we pass here parenthesis so using this technique we are informing javascript that we are using callback inside this argument so we are passing parenthesis here so when we call this callback we need to implement that function definition so right down here when we call this fetch api you can now create here a function like this or you can specify your existing function so i'm going to grab this front end and specify that right here i don't need to call here parenthesis because we already call that function right inside this page api so you don't need to specify any function parenthesis here so you just need to specify the reference of the function as a parameter to this page api and now when i save the changes you can see i'm gonna get the asynchronous score as a response now that's upon you you can specify any valid function name inside this argument you're not limited to create a dedicated function for this argument instead you can call here inline function as well that's upon you the benefit of using the callback function is that you can wait for the result of the previous function call and then execute another function call now let's look at how we can solve the first example problem we have so in the first example we had two functions first and second and we also have here variable data with empty array now when i save the changes it's going to return empty array i want to solve this problem with callback so what we are going to do is here i'm going to pass callback function so to pass callback function i'm just going to pass here an argument with the name function now that's upon you you can specify any name to this argument and after that when you have your function argument you can call that callback function right here so i'm going to just call here function like this and save the changes now when i save the changes i'm going to get an error message this is because i need to specify the function argument to this first function so as you know we have here a function argument so i need to specify that so let me just copy this and then specify that right here and now when i save the changes you can see i'm going to get the result what i want now let me show you a very interesting thing you can do with callback function now let's suppose that you want to access the variable of the first function inside the second function so let's suppose that you have here a variable let done and then you have done value to this variable and you want to access this let done variable inside the second function you can easily access that with this parenthesis so what if you specify here done and you access this variable right inside the second function by specifying here an argument and then call that argument right here and when you say that changes you can easily access the function variables inside the second function so using callback you can pass data between two different functions now that's upon you you can pass n number of argument to this function and you also specify n number of callback functions right to your function argument this is what we call the javascript callback help so let's talk more about callback help to understand callback help in detail let's imagine you're trying to make a mango shake we need to go through different steps just like wash peel and chop mangoes into a small pieces add milk sugar according to the sweetness of mango and ice cube and blend until smooth and creamy and there are no mangoes chunks in it and then we can serve the mango shake if these steps are synchronous then the code looks something like this if you call this function and if i implement all these functions right down here and just console.log the message from all these function when i save the changes i'm going to get the result something like this whenever i save the changes immediately i'm going to get my result this is the synchronous way to make a milkshake. The functions inside this recipe executes one after another immediately. It won't wait for the previous unfinished process. So let's suppose that we are not able to cut mangoes quickly. So if I add here right inside this function, if I add set timeout to add some delay to this first function, to this cut mangoes, and inside this set timeout, I'm going to console.log two messages waiting for mangoes and cut mangoes and we are going to add two second delay to this function if i save the changes i'm going to get this result add milk in mangoes add sugar in mangoes blend all together and after that we get waiting for mangoes and cut mangoes 
So this is not the process of creating milkshake. So we have to wait for the previous process to finish. For that, we can use asynchronous callback. We can solve this problem using callback. So let's suppose if I add set timeout in each function and add one second delay to each function. So we have this nested callback function inside this recipe function. So instead of calling all these functions, we just have to call cut mangoes and pass a callback function something like this. And now if I save the changes, I'm going to get the result what I want, but we might not be able to manage this callback here if the functions are not separated. What if we have this function inside another function right here and so on? It's mind boggling to see a nested callback, right? So, this is what we call the callback hell. You have nested callback functions, you have function inside a function, and so on. But I don't think it's a hell. The hell can be manageable if you know what to do with it. We can add command to this code to manage it. So, we can say here cut mangoes and call add milk like this or we can call promise so let's look at how we can use a promise here so i'm going to just wrap this set timeout inside the promise something like this so i'm just going to return a new promise with two argument resolve and reject and then return set timeout now you can see i'm going to get the same result but now i can chain all these functions one by one now what i can do is i can get rid of this mix wheel right from here let me save this and then i can chain all these functions one by one i can say here then add sugar save the changes when i save the changes you can see i'm going to have the process of creating a new recipe right inside this console so i'm going to get waiting for mangoes after we cut the mangoes we're going to add a sugar in the mangoes and blend all together. Now, because we don't have this add milk inside these cut mangoes, we're not going to get this console message. Now, what I want, I want to execute this add milk after these cut mangoes and before these add sugar in mangoes. What I can do is right here inside these cut mangoes, I'm going to pass a callback function. The name of the callback function is add milk. And then I'm going to add that callback function right inside this set timeout i'm going to call here add mail let me get rid of this parameter right from here and from here i'm just calling these functions inside this set timeout now let me get rid of this then save the changes and now we are going to get the recipe of milkshake we are waiting for the mangoes then we have cut mangoes add milk in mangoes add sugar in mangoes and then blend all together so this is the step-by-step -step process of creating a mango shake now what if you don't have these callback functions as a parameter i'm not going to get the result of what i want to get that result i need to call here dot then then specify the second function which i wanted to call so i'm going to add here add milk let me get rid of this parameter then call again dot then add sugar and then call dot then mix well when i save the changes now i'm going to get the result what i want but you can see this will add lots of chaining to this cut mangoes function you might have more than four functions inside your javascript program to solve this problem we have async and await so instead of using promises then we're going to use async await i recommend to use async await every time when you use promises so instead of this chain i'm simply going to call here recipe sync so we specify the sync function and then call here of it and after that i'm going to execute add milk then i'm going to execute add sugar and then i'm going to call mix well when i save the changes you can see i'm going to get the result what i want using a sync and of it it's more readable and concise so this is how you can easily use callback in the javascript application I hope you learned many new things from this course. Like this video if you find anything useful. Subscribe for more latest videos. That is all for now. I will see you in the next one.